I'll never raise a gun against a man again. You've had your wank. You're on Taylor's land. We got a government deed, and this is our land. Get your brood and get packing. Taylor says no squatters. Mr. Taylor's got no right to. Come on, we're wasting time. All right, you and the kids get back in the house. I trust I haven't disturbed you. We're well into the day. Oh, fair is the creation, last and best. Morning. All concern without unrest begins her rosy progress smiling. John Milton. Uh, Jefferson Waring. 
Uh, no, son. John Milton wrote those immortal lines. I am Peter Sharp, printing. Jefferson Waring. Will you join me in some coffee? Uh, tell you what, uh, you bring these bales of paper inside and I'll make the coffee. More coffee? No, thanks. You know, Rebel, this nation of ours seems to be set up so when the time comes to ride, there's nowhere to ride but west. You must have walked. You planning to stop here or are you going on through? That's a poor joke. I lost my horse last night five miles from nowhere. No joke intended, son. But you can be sure of one thing. This is nowhere. Coffee's good. You know, if you're going to stay, you better think yourself up a good excuse. You might be in trouble. It's been nothing but trouble for four years. You get kind of used to it. I never did. But I'm an optimist. Lo, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall uh, not lift sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Thanks for the coffee. Just a moment, son. I'll show you where my home is. You walk in and catch yourself some sleep. If my daughter hasn't left for school yet, tell her I sent you. Uh, rest the weary traveler and all that sort of thing. Peter Sharp's daughter? You're supposed to be in school. You're a little outsized for school, aren't you? Had it all figured out, didn't you? Sneak in here while I'm teaching school and Pop's at work. Well, get out of that bed. We're paying a visit to the marshal. Get dressed. Get outside, then. What for? Oh, certainly. But don't try it. Let me see the complaint. 
Miss Cat wrote it out. Obviously. Yes, sir. He went busting into Miss Catty's bedroom. Beats me what fur. But she caught him, and we marched him right down here. He was sober, too. I don't suppose it would do any good to explain how it happened. I don't suppose it would, Mr. Uh, Waring. Why don't you get Peter Sharp? He'll tell you. Yeah, I'll get Peter Sharp. He'll tell us. Yes, sir, Marshal. Slocum, what happened? The Lloyds. Somebody burned them out last night. We found the children this morning. Tommy, Billy. Tommy and Billy are coming to live with me, Miss Sharp. I can use a couple of top hands in my place. I came by to tell you the services will be in 30 minutes if you can make it. I'll be there. The Indians must have done it. That's right, Yale. The Indians. They come all the way from Colorado just to burn out the Lloyds. Murder. Cold-blooded murder. <laughs> Taylor's gunmen, burning ranches, killing women along with their men. Mrs. Lloyd was such a nice, quiet lady. Kathy, honey, I feel the same way you do about it. But there's nothing can be done. You're supposed to be a newspaper man. Why don't you print the truth? Are you scared? I don't know. Maybe I am. I have you to look out for, too. Sharp, I told you the marshal was waiting. Don't make me tell you again. Watch your tongue, sir. Pop, listen. Forget about me. You go ahead and put this on the front page. Name the murders. You do that and watch the people rise up and put an end to Mr. Taylor and his gunmen. Morning, Peter. Miss Kathy? John, there's been a mistake. That's what Mr. Waring said. Alexander Pope said, a man should never be ashamed to own he has been in the wrong, which is but saying he is wiser today than yesterday. This time it was a woman. It was my fault, Marshal. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mr. Waring, you're at liberty. I assume you'll have a job. He can work for me. Good. Yale, yeah, get Mr. Waring his gun. Don't have no gun, Marshal. No gun? I don't like guns. Don't that beat all? I guess I owe you an apology. That's all right. I'm sorry, too. Whatever for? Didn't get off to a better start. Any man who talks that smooth is either a gambler or a... I'm neither. What are you? Just a tired ex-soldier from Virginia. We had plenty of your war out here. More besides. We had Quantrill. I heard about it. Now we have a private kind of war. Going on right here in Independence. I don't want any part of any kind of war. It has a bad smell. You certainly came to the wrong place, Mr. Waring. I'm going to the funeral services, Pop. Who died? Lloyd's dead, Marshal. They were burned out last night. Both Lloyd and his wife were murdered. They was invited to leave, but they wouldn't do it. Just the Indians got him, eh, Marshal? Be quiet, Yale. I know, Pop. You can't fight City Hall. I can say at a moment like this, but I would like to say John and Mary Lloyd came west seeking a better world. Let us pray for them. Let us pray that they have found one. And at this time, we must thank Mr. McCullough for his generous contribution in giving us without charge the use of his establishment for the sole purpose of holding these services. It's a shame with the preacher in this town yet. That's our undertaker, Funeral Franklin. Rise up. Rise up and act as pallbearers to carry this, these brethren from his veil of tears to the exalted paradise we know they have reached. Amen. Amen. I know the Lloyds will rest in peace because the boys will be well taken care of by those two fine people, the Guthries. Thank you, brethren. Thank you. I need a couple of dollars for the grave diggers. How about it, gents? After all, 
You were friends of the dear departed. Thank you. Thank you. And the verdict of the coroner is that the Lloyds were murdered by persons unknown. Oh, Pop. Pop, you're a good newspaper man. This isn't right. Kathy, you've been helping me run the paper for the last six years. Your mother did the same before she died. But from the kitchen, not from the shop. Now, I'm still the editor, and I know what's best. You're condoning murder. What I think and what I print may be entirely different matters. In this town, Artemis Taylor holds all of the aces. We depend on Taylor's goodwill to keep the paper going. There's just nothing we can do about it. This makes almost 20 homesteaders. Killed by persons unknown. Kathy, you've got a lot to learn. Jeff, am I so wrong? I learned that today it was the Lloyds. Tomorrow it might be the Quigleys or the Guthries. Well, after that, you or me. You can see what I mean. I can see that this is no town for me. Good evening, Sam. Let me buy you a drink. You buy it? Yes. Hey, boys, funeral Franklin's buying. What do you think of that? There's no need of that. Hey, Jess, step up. The drinks are on Frank. Sam, Sam, please, please. Start water, Mac. Too proud to drink with us? I don't want any trouble. I just want to buy my own. Who are you, stranger? I ain't seen you around before. I haven't been around before. You ain't answered this question, soldier. I think I have. Strangers ought to be sociable. Leastwise, if they want to get along. Hey, I'm mighty easy not to get along with. Especially for rebels. Or homesteaders, maybe. Explain yourself, mister. It's clear enough. You cut them down on Franklin, they're playing some. shooting is required in this town. This stranger here insulted me in Franklin. I didn't know it was possible. Mr. Waring, please come with me. I want to talk to you. Jeff. I don't know. California, maybe? Maybe. Away from here is all. May I say you'll not find it different anywhere else? 
I'm gonna try. Wherever you land, see if they need a newspaper. We may be out of business here soon. No, Pop. We're staying here. Don't you run before the fight starts, too. We have met like the ships upon the sea who hold an hour's converse, and then away they speed on lonely paths to meet no more. Alexander Smith. Jefferson Waring. Goodbye, Jeff, and good luck. You're being acquitted, Jeff. But I hope you find that place you're looking for. Thanks. I hope there's someone there like you. I know why you're sent for me, Justin. I know the payment was due yesterday, but things are looking up. Yes, sir, definitely looking up. We have seven new subscriptions. More advertising promised, and even the job building is better. There's nothing to worry about, Justin. Really nothing. I'm not worried. I just didn't want you to think I've been neglectful, Justin. Of course not. Sit down. I'll be ready to make the payment in a week or two. We both know this is a poor way to do business ordinarily. However, the Plains News performs an important community service. Thank you, Justin. Have a cigar. I believe I will. With the best interests of the community at heart, there's something I think we should discuss. If there's anything I can do, I... Thank you. As a matter of fact, there is. You know about the undesirable element coming into this area. You mean the small ranchers? The squatters, yes. They're coming in considerable numbers, and it's harmful. They're good people on the whole. That's a matter of opinion. They're land thieves. But there's plenty of land, and they hold government grants. I feel that with your help, we could drive these nesters out. Perhaps with public opinion, perhaps form a vigilante committee. Vigilantes? You can't be serious, Justin. That would mean the worst sort of lawlessness and destruction. Now, about your help, Peter. We'd like to see a series of editorials And that... if we won't print them. Your privilege, of course. But you're a smart young lady, Miss Sharp. You must know that I also have the privilege of demanding immediate payment or immediate possession of the Plains News. Come on, Pop, let's go. Just a minute, Kathy. How long do I have to meet the payment, Justin? You're in default right now. But I'll hold off till I get your answer. The paper comes out in three days, doesn't it? Yes. I'll read the editorial and make my decision then. I hope we can still remain friends, Peter. Good day, sir. Shoot him. Shoot him? Just like that? You heard me. He's on our land. Hey, I can't do that. Over here and keep your hands high. Pretty poor shot. Search him, Ding. Yes, sir. What are you doing on my land? Heading west. Heading west where? Just west. Huh, a drifter. Nothing there, Miss Taylor, not even a gun. Keep your hands on the saddle. Who are you? Ulysses S. Grant, who are you? We'll go where you can make jokes for an audience. Go on. Line. Mr. Taylor don't have no truck with fences. Them's the railroad surveyors. Shut up, Ding. Go on. Mr. 
that all, Miss Taylor? You've said enough. this you brought with you? I don't know, but I'm sure gonna find out. Sit down, Mr. Uh... Waring. Jefferson Waring. My name's Taylor. We don't often have visitors out here. I can understand why. You always shoot at them? Somebody shoot at you? Tell me about it, Nora. Sing and I spotted them on the east section. We waited for them in the cottonwood grove down by the creek. My horse shied, so I missed him. Well, is that all? You always leave things out, Nora. I never know what's going on, and here I am, strapped to this chair with arthritis. Uh, Ding here, he always remembers everything, and he tells it to me good. Ding talks too much. Well, I like Ding. Uh, you, from the beginning, what did you think when you heard the shot? You were scared, weren't you? I was scared. Yeah, yeah, sure, I know. Happened to me a long time ago. I was scared, too. Why didn't you run? Because next time she wouldn't have missed. Oh, why didn't you shoot? He doesn't have a gun, Father. Well, what's this about Ding? We spotted the surveyors as we rode in. Ding told them they were from the railroad. Ah, uh, Ding's a fool sometimes, but he's a good boy. He remembers everything, and he tells it to me like I can almost see it. Never in a hurry. You're an ex-soldier, Mr. Waring. That's right. Too bad you lost. Somebody has to lose. Yeah, yeah, somebody's always got to lose. We're wasting time. Don't be in such an all-fired hurry, Nora. A man's got a right to know why he's going to die. Please, sit down. Maybe it don't seem fair. Maybe it ain't your fault. But we can't take no chances. I haven't done anything. I don't even know you. No, but you saw the surveyors. They're going to run track through here. The railroad's going to want to buy all this land, my land. I fought Indians for it. My wife's buried here. But I don't want your land. No, but the squatters do. And they're coming more of them every day. If they find out the railroad wants this land, how valuable it is, I won't be able to blast them out with dynamite. No, Mr. Waring. Like I said, we just can't take no chances. Doesn't anyone else know about the railroad? No. Oh. Nobody but you. You lose, soldier. You lose again. Ding. Take him down the ravine back of Pogi Run. You hired me as a horse wrangler. Mr. Taylor, I don't come to no murder. Do like I'm telling you, Ding. All right, let's go. Both of them. Ding? Yes, Ding, too.
What's on your mind, mister? Staying alive. I sure wish I could help. You can. What Mr. Taylor says goes. How's he gonna know if I hightail it out of here for California? It's to stop you from heading back to town. I don't want any trouble. That's why I left Independence in the first place. Go awful hard with me if I was to... How's he gonna know? You're waiting oh. to hear the shot back at the ranch. Fire a couple into the air. Laid out? Mm -hmm. Did you check the jail? Nobody arrested this week. Except Jeff. Except Jeff. Quite a lad. Maybe just as well he moved on. He was too soft for this place. Maybe a little scared, too. Scared? It takes a lot of courage to stick by your convictions, to be called a coward. It's easy to go along with the rest of the gunslingers. Like him? Now, Poppy's gone. Made up your mind, Pop? There's just no choice. I can't lose the paper. Oh, listen to me. People know you here. They respect you. That's why it makes a difference what you say. If you get scared now, all those small ranchers and farmers are going to get scared along with you. I'd like to do it, Kathy. I'd like to tell this town what's happening. I'll do it in a minute if... If what? If I thought it would make any difference. It's mine. It's worth a try. Kathy, you should have been in politics. I am. Every American's in politics. Probably some don't realize it. Stay. Keep your voice down, John Quigley. The Lloyd's kids are sleeping in there. Guthrie, how can you stay when they tell you to go? Look what happened to the Lloyd's. If it was only you... I talked it over with my missus, and she's for sticking it out. Anyways, how'd we go? 
Two cows, a horse, an old wagon, and not a dollar to our name. Can't get provisioned at the store. Well, when my time comes, I go. There is too much fight here. There's land somewhere else. Yeah, but well, don't forget it took a heap of traveling to get here and a heap of doing after we got here. This land is ours by law. Kramer, a man came up to you and your farm in the old country and said, uh, get out, Kramer, I'll kill you. What would you have done? Well, first I would give him the boot where it hurt. And I'd go down to the village and tell the burgomaster. But here, there is no burgomaster here. Kramer, the law says... What law? There is no law in independence. Just because Taylor pins a badge on Harding, that doesn't make Harding different from any other gunman. That's right. There's nobody to protect us. So what do we do, run or protect ourselves? We can sit around and let them shoot us down like a lot of sitting ducks. First they get me or run me off. Then they get you, John. Then Slocum. Then Kramer. Then Appleton. Each in turn while the rest sit around and nod their heads and attend our funeral. But if we stand together, if they know we'll fight. Wait a minute, Guthrie. Why didn't you think of that when the Lloyds got killed? Lloyd never told nobody about Taylor's plan until it was too late. The same night he told, he was killed. Mr. Kennedy! 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 Mr.
After all, Artemis, if Harding's sensibilities dictate this course, I think we can carry off the night's work without him. Then uh, put that badge back on him. Now, if you'll excuse me. Nora, see the marshal to the door. Here. How does that shoulder feel now? Fine. It'll be well enough by the time they hang me. They're going to hang me, aren't they? Maybe. I hope not. Why don't you let me out of here? You know I can't do that. And you know I didn't kill those two men. Possibly not, but I got to hold you for trial. You'll get a jury. Sure. Packed with Taylor's friends. You've made friends here, too. But they won't be on the jury. No, I suppose not. Your trial doesn't come up for a couple of weeks, and by that time, your friends will be long gone. Meaning what? Now they know about the railroad. I'm afraid, knowing that, they're not going to be around long. Any of them. When will this happen? In a couple of nights. They'll all go at once. Butchery, they won't have a chance. That is the general idea. But it isn't your idea. No, I won't be there. You quit, Taylor? No, I'm still marshal. But this thing isn't for me. It's like shooting a man in the back, just as easy as that. And just as hard as that. Then why don't you stop it? Why should I? We've all got to look out after ourselves. I like being Marshal. And why should I give that up for a bunch of crazy farmers that are just waiting for a chance to draw on me and see if I'm as fast with my gun as I'm supposed to be? Mr. Waring, you came into this town with a lot of very noble ideas. And where's it gotten you? Waiting for the hangman. Look, keep that down as low as it'll go. It won't shave your wrist. If you don't hurry, we'll be up all night. That's fine. But what am I going to drink it out of? You forgot the cup again. Working late tonight, Sharp? Everyone has an awful sudden interest in me. We just want to see what you're going to put in the paper tomorrow. We won't be long. That's right. You're leaving right now. Well, I'll be. You certainly will if you don't get out of here. I'm warning you. No need to be nasty, girly. Pretty thing like you. We just come in to see your dad don't get himself in no trouble. You'll be nice to us, girly. We'll be nice to you. Stop it. Stop it. Now take your friend and get out. These men came in and tried to create a disturbance, John. Doesn't look like they got very far. All right, put them away. Hey, come on. Miss Kathy, don't you know that ladies aren't supposed to handle guns? Now you know one that does. Good night, Marshal. Good night, Kathy. Good night, Peter. has lost his mind. That or he just naturally wants to die. Well, he ain't gonna die natural. Not after Taylor reads this. The United States has passed the law providing that any citizen who is willing to work can settle his family and make a farm or ranch. And also that the range shall be free and restricted by no man. How then does a gang of cutthroats dare to terrorize peaceful citizenry, spreading death and destruction without mercy? We all know who has hired these bandits. Who is paying them to keep so-called tres trespassers away from what he jealously calls his land? The land belongs to all of its citizens for the development of this territory. 
Murder the like of which not has been seen since the late Indian Moors has gone unpunished. This newspaper accuses a... Get Harding out of here right away. This news accuses a hireling, John Harding, our so-called marshal, who has made no move to stop these depredations. You know, I got half a mind... You certainly have. Keep quiet. This man, Harding, is no better than a common gunman and has been foisted upon us to be our peace officer. He can really lay it on when he makes up his mind to. What possessed Peter to do a thing like this? I'd like to put a stop to the brutality and the killings, but I'd never get away with it. Any more than Peter will get away with this editorial. What will he do? I don't know. He's not a good insurance risk at this point. You'll have to protect him. It's your duty as marshal. Mr. Waring, you don't have to tell me my duty. When the idea is to be prepared for Mr. Taylor's gunman, when they come here to raid Guthrie. That's right. Self-defense. Are they coming tonight for sure? They're due tonight. If they come, we'll be waiting. To be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving the peace. Julius Caesar? George Washington. Sharp? This means trouble. You've got trouble, Quigley. You're a fool if you don't know it. To be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving the peace. Do you know who said that? Sure. George Washington. This still means trouble. Maybe even get us killed. You'll get killed anyway if you don't stand on your own two feet and fight back. What are you doing about tonight? I'm going through with the original plan. The sure thing that Taylor won't change his. Well, that's decided, then. We'll all meet here at sundown. Yeah, I guess. Be sure your women and kids are moved to Kramer's in plenty of time. We'll leave a couple of men to guard them. How many of that leave us? Uh, about 15, 16. Not many. I wish Jeff was out. He was in the army. So were we, Peter. Maybe not the same army then. We're together now. to take this handcuff off, Keith, and come to get you tonight to lynch you. But it don't make me no difference if they hang you now or after a trial. Hanging, hanging, if you ask me. Who's asking you? Don't get uppity with me, mister. Old man Sharp just got his out there for being uppity. <laughs>
What do you want here? Peter was my friend. You're looking for Jeff? No. You saw him? Yes. And you let him go? Yes. Why? Peter was right about everything. You understand? Yes. Why don't you run on home? I'll take care of things here. Go ahead. Be sure to use your fastest horses if they're well rested. Sidearms, rifles, be sure they're well oiled. Don't forget to bring plenty of ammunition. You'll have to change the plans. Now what? Peter Sharp was killed over an hour ago. Oh, no. Because of the newspaper? Yes, they're planning to burn you all out tonight. But don't worry, we've got two things. The prize and something to fight for. Taylor's men are paid gunmen. I figure they'll ride in a bunch. 25, maybe 30 men. That sounds right. What are you thinking? Two skirmish lines. One a mounted column. About two miles down the trail from Taylor's ranch, over here is a patch of woods called Webster's Grove. Over on the other side is a hill. No sign of him yet. First shooting from the woods, we'll ride in as skirmishers. Hold your fire until I give the word. You want folly fire? Folly fire every time. Price is effective. Take your positions, men. Good luck. Quickly. What now, Jeff? Let's ride over to Taylor's ranch and clean this thing up once and for all. Fine. Guthrie, get your men mounted and escort the women back to their homes. I'm going with Jeff.
I kill him? All right. Who is that out there? Me, Taylor. Jeff Waring, remember? Yeah. This time you lose. That don't make no difference. You, you won't get off this ranch. Who's going to stop us, Taylor? You haven't got a right or left. That's a lie. This time we were ready. Your people rode right into an ambush. Nora. What happened to Nora? You may have done anything to my daughter. I, I swear I'll talk to you. I can't feel a thing for you, Taylor. You're a beaten old man. I'm not sorry. A... You've ruined so many lives that yours isn't even a down payment. I go wrong? Everything. Everything they were waiting for. Hurry up, will you? There isn't much time. I'm afraid you'll have to take the time, Nora. Banking hours begin at 9 tomorrow morning. Listen, I've got $40,000 in that safe. Get it now. I've got to get out of here. My dear, the banking laws of our state require proof of deposit to be presented upon withdrawal of funds. Have you that proof? No, of course not. We have here a list of our depositors. If you will look closely, you will find that your name does not appear. Open the safe! Open the safe! Nora! Why, Nora, I, I'm your father's best. You, I've known you since you were a little girl. Why, Nora, I, I've been like an uncle to you. You, uh, you mustn't be angry about my little joke. There you are, my dear. Nothing to worry about. I'm your father's best friend. You, uh, you your money's been there all the time, Nora. Hi. Hi, Nora. Now, 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 Nora. Don't, don't be hasty, Nora. Please. Now, please, Nora. <laughs>
kill you, Harding. Don't be foolish, Jeff. You let Peter Sharp die, the Lloyds, and lots of others. People who depended on you. I'm gonna kill you. Jeff! Jeff! I've been waiting for you. Are you all right? I'm fine. Oh, you're tired, Jeff. You can't think. Come to the house. You can't outdraw me, Jeff. You know that. I'm gonna try. I don't know very much about a newspaper. Scared? A little. A newspaper talks to a lot of people. Nothing to be scared of. If you have something to tell them. I'm glad you didn't run away, Jeff. Nowhere to run. The gift of prophecy and understanding. And have not love, we have not. First Corinthians. 